The Mini 2 is DJI's new and improved Mavic Mini. The Mini 2 retains the Mavic Mini's lightweight, small form factor, and they even share a lot of the same accessories. This video is an extension of my Mavic Mini tips and tricks video. So be sure to stick around until the end and I'll give you a link to that video. Mostly everything in that video is also applicable to the Mini 2, but I'll go over the specific Mini 2 tips and tricks in this video, obviously. So getting straight into it, my first tip for the Mini 2 is to not try to fight the wind. One of the best parts of the Mini 2 is the size and weight. One of the worst parts about the Mini is also the size and weight. It's a portable drone that you don't have to register, but it suffers from being pushed around from the wind. With its upgraded motors, the Mini 2 feels like it can battle the wind slightly better than the Mavic Mini, but it's still not nearly as good as the Mavic Air 2. When you're filming something, the wind may gently start to push the drone off course, and your first reaction may be to course correct and try to manually fight against the wind to balance out the movement of the drone. I found this generally to be a bad idea, and the Mini 2 has downward facing sensors that help the drone move in a straight path. So whenever the drone is creeping in a direction, that usually means the wind is actively pushing it right now. And when the wind dies down, as long as you're not flying too fast or the wind is too strong, the drone will drift back onto course. And when this happens and there's a little bit of gentle wind, this is a really easy thing for the Mini to do. But if you try to fight the wind, the drone will actually think you want to fly over and it will actually overcorrect because once the wind dies down, it's trying to get back on course and now you're moving it further off course. As long as you're not flying too fast, the drone will slowly drift back to its original course. This happens when there's a gentle wind, but if there's a strong wind, it can completely knock the Mini 2 off course and it will not return to its original path. But for slow winds, trying to correct leads to overcorrection, and it's actually ruined a couple of my shots. The second tip for the Mini 2 is to use the quick transfer to quickly transfer photos and videos to your phone without needing to use the remote controller. This is one of my new favorite features, and I love the ability to easily get photos and videos off of my drone without needing to plug my phone into the controller and then download them for there. For videos, you have the ability to download the full clip or download the trimmed clip. To use Quick Transfer, turn the drone on and press the button on the back bottom side. Open the DJI Fly app on your phone and it will prompt you to connect. After connecting, you can select your photos and videos on the drone and download them directly to your device through the DJI Fly app. It really does live up to its name for the quick transfer for quick setup, but it does take a long time to transfer large videos in my experience. If you have large videos, it might be best to transfer those clips on a computer, but for short clips or trimmed video clips, the quick transfer is a really nice option. My third tip is to zoom in on your shots. The Mini 2 has the same zoom function as the Mavic Air 2. You can now press the 1x button on your DJI Fly app, or press the function button on the top left side of the remote and use the wheel on the remote controller to zoom in on your footage. This is a digital zoom and not an optical zoom, so be aware that you're digitally just making your footage larger, but it is a nice feature if you have to check something while you're in the air or you don't have time to edit. Doing all this right on the camera is really nice and easy. And speaking of the camera, my next tip is to shoot video in 4K30 and photos in RAW. But be careful which direction you're pointing the lens of this drone. Another big advantage of the Mini 2 over the Mavic Mini is that you're now able to shoot 4K in 24, 25, or 30 frames per second. The 1080p didn't see any bumps in frame rate over the original, but that's okay. The addition of the 4K is a step in the right direction. The Mini 2 has also gotten raw photo support, so you can retain more detail in your images, which is a huge deal when it comes to editing. As great as the 4K and raw photos are though, you should be aware of the angle you're pointing your lens relative to the sun or other light sources. Other more expensive drones manage the lens flares pretty well, but for the most part, the Mini 2 has some pretty heavy lens flares when you're pointing it directly at the sun or where sunlight is directly hitting the lens. This isn't a professional drone, so I'm gonna take it easy on the lens flares here, but it's something to be aware of and it can ruin a shot if you're not careful. My fifth tip is to make sure you have a memory card. Other DJI drones have a small amount of internal storage in case you need it in a pinch. However, the Mini 2 does not have any internal storage. So if you forget your SD card or fill one up in the air, you're gonna have to land, switch out your memory cards, and then fly again to get your shots. 
The internal storage on other drones has saved me a few times, and I really wish DJI would have added internal storage here, especially since this drone is aimed at beginners. So we're halfway through the Mini 2 tips and tricks, and if you're enjoying this content, be sure to subscribe and comment below if you learned something. I have been checking out my analytics in my YouTube dashboard lately, and only 5% of you that are watching are subscribed. And if you're enjoying this video, like and subscribe. And if you're a returning member, thank you and welcome back. Okay, my sixth tip is that you can use the Mavic Mini accessories and batteries with the Mini 2, but the Mini 2 batteries won't fit into the original Mavic Mini. If you're using the Mavic Mini's batteries in the Mini 2, however, you'll have to register the drone as the Mavic Mini 2's batteries are lighter than the original Mavic Mini's. So you'll have to register your drone in the US and most other countries because that will bump you up over that minimum weight restriction. My next tip here, and I'm not trying to sound like the drone police, but I have to say it, even though the drone is 242 grams, you don't have to register it, but you still have to abide by your local rules and regulations. It only takes one person not to follow the rules to cause stricter enforcement and have more guidelines put on drones. I'd like to see them as unrestricted as possible, so know what you can and can't do in the area that you're flying in. And never fly in restricted airspace if you don't have authorization. With that being said, my eighth tip for the Mini 2 is to get comfortable flying and performing maneuvers like orbiting and profile shots. The Mini 2 doesn't have any active track modes. It also lacks front, side, and rear obstacle avoidance. It does have some quick shot modes like Orbit and Helix that can be helpful, but the lack of obstacle avoidance in the front, back, and sides really make these quick shots something you need to be very confident to use because you don't have that obstacle avoidance to fall back on. Lack of automated flight modes isn't necessarily a bad thing though, because this forces you to learn how to fly the drone manually and not rely on auto modes. I'm all about learning how to fly manually before using these auto modes so you'll know in case something does happen while you're flying and the auto modes aren't working, you'll know how to get the drone back to you safely and efficiently. One thing to note here though, that since there are zero tracking features, you're not going to be able to film yourself reliably without looking at your remote while you're flying. If you want to get automated tracking so you can film yourself or others, you should check out the next more expensive drone, the Mavic Air 2. I have a couple of videos about it on my channel if you want to check those out after this video. The next tip kind of piggybacks off of the first one, and that's to be aware of the wind, wind direction, and how fast the wind is going. 23.5 miles per hour is the absolute fastest wind resistance that DJI says this drone has. And with that being said, uh, I wouldn't go in gusts over 10 or maybe 12 if you want to get usable footage. Even in these conditions, I wouldn't fly very far from myself because it only takes one rogue wind gust to take this farther away than you actually anticipated. And it could be difficult, depending on wind direction and where you are relative to the wind, to get your drone back. So for beginners, and this is a beginner drone, I always say err on the side of less is more and I know I can get the drone back and I don't have to necessarily flip it into sport mode to fight the wind because that can be a nerve wracking situation and being able to fight the wind in a very confident way is really important for this little tiny drone. If you're flying close to objects, it's going to be easier to tell if the drone is being pushed one direction by the wind. One way to get around this bobbing back and forth footage is to just fly farther from subjects. That way it'll be harder to tell if the wind is actually moving it. This is not always possible and it will change the composition of your shot and your framing, but if it's windy and you don't want bobbing in your footage, you may have to fly farther from your subject to get a smooth shot. My next tip for the Mini 2 is to enable payload mode if you're flying with heavy accessories. Adding heavy accessories like an action camera to your Mavic 2 will allow you to fly more reliably with more weight on the drone. I usually don't add anything other than ND filters to my drone, so I don't use payload mode very often. When I do need payload mode though, usually the drone will flip into it automatically. But for some accessories that don't weigh as much, and there's no wind and you're not flying very fast, your drone might not flip into payload mode, so that might be something to be aware of. These were my tips and tricks for the Mini 2, but I did make a tips and tricks for the Mavic Mini that is still filled with additional tips that will be applicable for the Mini 2 as well. Check out the link above or in the description below to view that video to get some more helpful tips. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out my other videos. Thank you for sticking around to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.